my condolences, your Bills future bet, which oh, yeah. would have been so incredible. Uh, obviously, the Bills fell short to Kansas City. Um, w- when you lose that game, like, do you, do, I feel like you take the lot, like, it's it's not a big deal to you, right? Like, obviously, you would love to win the, the 20 yeah. grand or whatever, but yeah. you just move on because you just focus on the, the body of work, like we were talking earlier, right? Yeah, I, I bet that future at the beginning of the year at the Westgate, a thousand to win 20,000 on uh, the Bills just to make it to the Super Bowl. And I didn't hedge. <laughs> I'm not really a hedger. Maybe a bigger amount of money. Well, it's all relative. So, um, you know, I, I didn't hedge that particular game, but I was betting some stuff back and forth a little bit during the game, a little bit of live wagering, which I normally don't do, but I'll do it during commercials on, on big games like this. Um, actually made a few bucks on that. I never think about, well, you need the Bills to win, so put that in the equation of making these bets live. I actually won a few bucks on when when when, um, when they, were, they were down nine nothing. Bills were up nine nothing. I, I bet Kansas City, and uh, I bet them a couple times during the game. So I made a couple grand there. But again, I didn't do that with the intent on uh, middling or hedging. But yeah, so it was okay. The game was good for me. Unders. Um, I, I usually like betting unders on a lot of props, and and um, you know maybe I don't know. You know, really Sunday night. I think we actually lost a unit on props on that game, but the earlier game was good on props. So yeah, you know, it's all, listen, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I want to win, but it doesn't affect me winning or losing. So when I lose, it's not going to affect me where I feel, Oh, all right, how do I get that money back and get out for the day? That's the number one, well, number one reason why these uh, factories are, are, I call them factories. These giant casinos down the road from me uh, are, are built. Everyone yeah. just wants Chasing. to get even. Chasing. John, they just want to get even for the day. Just let me get even. How many people have prayed to God, which you're not supposed to do, but you prayed to God that let me just get even, God, and I'll get out of here. Yeah. And that's the reason why these places are those those monstrosities are there. So And isn't mind. it funny that I mean, I don't know what the percentage is that end up in that boat. I mean, it's gotta be in the nineties, right? Um, that that are just trying Definitely. to get back to even. And Definitely. it's such an interesting thing. It's like how how do we all end up in that same boat where you know it's human nature you yeah. honestly it's human nature and guess what that's right bill krakenberger is going to admit this because i always tell the truth um i i've been there oh, oh definitely definitely i've had sessions i had a losing thirty thousand dollar session at the win um a couple of years back on video poker i remember and I got home, I was mad at myself. I said, all I had to lose was, you know, I was playing. I, I had a deal where I had to put so much money through the machine. So I had to put a quarter of a million cycle through the machine. And I ran so bad. You have to hit Royals. So I didn't hit any Royals. So um, I actually overbet instead of losing a 20 grand, which I should have lost for that s- session. I, I went for another 10 grand. It happens. I understand it. But it didn't affect my life, though. It, it didn't, you know, I could have, uh, luckily, I could afford the, the 10,000. not going to make a difference to me. But I know that even when I was younger in high school, I was a terrible gambler when I was, and I'm going to, this is going to sound funny probably to you, John. When I was 13, 14, 15, 16, <laughs> taking a bus to Monmouth Park and gambling. And stuff, I, I, and I always earned a lot of money. Even as a kid, I worked on a boardwalk in Jersey Shore. I earned a lot of money. And when I say a lot of money, I was earning $200, $300 a day back in the 80s. And back in the 80s, I, you know, working, working the carny game skills, skill games. So, um, I would take that money and blow it at the racetrack like a stone cold sucker. So it took someone to shake me and show me what the promised land was, you know, 10 years later. And, and, and uh, yeah, I haven't reverted back to that. Thank God. Wait a minute. Yeah. So you, there was a day when you did bet the horses. Oh, of course. I grew up. Okay. Around, I grew up around Mammoth Park. My, <laughs> my, my father and my, my Italian uncles all, who all, by the way, totally poisoned my father. They all, took my father to the racetrack. My father was like a, a country boy, you know, I met my, my mother Italian from the Bronx and, and, and her brothers and, 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 and stepbrothers, they totally poisoned my father. My father wasn't even a gambler. I mean, he, 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 he went to the racetrack. He started playing lottery. I mean, um, Oh, I did the same things, you know, um, I'll throw 10 bucks on a lottery now, but it has to be like 200 million or more. That sounds so dumb. Like, I, 10, <laughs> like 10 million wouldn't be great. Right. But, right. But, um, yeah. I mean, I'll do that, but, but I don't think, I, I just think it's, you know, it's a sucker game. This the horse. I never knew the racetrack. I never knew that betting horses was a 25% house edge. 
I never do. I just go, you know, put 50 bucks to win on a horse. I don't realize that the house is taking out 20%, 25%, depending on what type of bet out of the pool I, and keeping it for themselves compared to sports betting, which is a four and a half percent hold compared to video poker or basic strategy blackjack, which is can be a half a percent hold. So I never realized the difference between all three until I got older. And, and, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I refuse to be a sucker now. I refuse to be that person that goes into the casino and over bets and, and goes crazy until they have no more money until their credit cards and their Mac cards are, you know, tapped out. Um, I refuse to be that person. I'm not doing that again. I, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not. And listen, I know it happens. It happens to some of my best friends. Th that reminds me. And, and it's going to embarrass him a little bit, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So I got one of my guys around me and he, uh, of course, is, is listening to me on certain things, but he has to bet his own stuff no matter what, because he <laughs> needs that pat on the back. So here I am having an unbelievable 65% season in college basketball, which has to revert to the mean a little bit sooner or later. Um, and here I noticed he was betting, he's betting like the Dukes of the world and stuff and, and the big name teams. And I'm, I'm overhearing him and rooting for games. And I'm, I had to ask him, this is just last week. He said, what, what's up? I'm, what, you got Duke? He said, yeah, I bet Duke. I think they're a the better team. I, I, I gave you like five plays and it doesn't matter if I go 0 and five, but I gave you five plays. And when I give you the plays, I tell you to bet them for yourself. And he only bets 100, 200, 300 a game. <laughs> and I, I tell you to bet them, and I give them to you and tell you to bet them now because they're going to move. Every one of my games move a point, point and a half. And, and here you are betting sucker games still because you like Duke and, and you like the Lakers. By the way, that, he bet the Lakers over just to bet. That was the last game on the board. It's a nighttime West Coast game. <laughs> Lakers over. Lakers and over. I, I get so upset, but you know what? You can't change who you are sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's that. Mm -hmm. I love it. Words of wisdom from the crack man.